Hello, this is Kerry here. I wanted to show you one of the projects I'm working on for my greenhouse. It's actually a pretty fun project that uh, teaches the basics of electronics and and electricity and voltage and did it with my son Derek here. Hey Derek, say hello to the camera. Hi. Alright, so let me show you what we have here and as you can see I'm not doing this in a workshop. I'm just actually doing it on my my bed on my in my bedroom and um, we have here is a an ice chest and we have a, it's just one of those throwaway foam ice chest I purchased it at the local store and we have a couple of case fans and you may be asking why you have an ice chest top and some case fans well the idea is to make a homemade cooling system for the greenhouse uh, I do live in Texas and one thing I figured I'd have a problem with is heat and we are in the middle of summer now full blown and even though I have some shade covering my greenhouse and I'll show you that later there is still a problem with heat so what we were doing and this is the first step of the project uh, is we took an ice chest top as you can see here and we took a couple of old case fans from some old PCs I'm a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to PC parts I didn't throw the the fans away I kinda scavenged the parts because you never know if you need them and uh, what I've done here is wired the leads of these two case fans together like so with some uh, crimp connectors uh, in case you didn't know on a PC fan most PC fans are 12 volt. There are a few uh, 5 volt fans out there, but the majority of them are 12 volt. And uh, usually, the rating is actually listed on the fan itself. I'll see if I can carefully turn this over. I have this glue drying, but if you see here, it usually has the ratings on the fan itself as to the voltage requirement, probably upside down. Not necessarily very clear to see here. This is pretty bad video, I apologize. But anyway, you get the idea. I just know, just know that these fans are 12 volt fans. So I took the, the ice chest top and marked some sharpie marks on the top side of it and as you can see I basically just cut an opening in the top here so what I'm doing is marking here I marked here with Sharpie and here and here just four dots really then I just kinda cut out a circular pattern in the shape of the fan just to blow air I took these leads on a computer fan the red lead is the positive and the black lead is a negative and you ask well there are a couple of extra color wires there well for speed control there is a control wire on this particular fan it's yellow on this other fan it's white but usually no matter what the PC fan is there's going to be a red and black wire and those are almost undoubtedly usually red positive black negative and then white and yellow now I went ahead and wired the control control fan wires although I, I wouldn't really have to I could have just cut those loose or left them loose or cut them off but I went ahead and did it just for good measure it was already there it made the connection thicker so when I crimped it down it had something more to bite onto as you can see here so I wired all the positive leads together and I'm wiring these in parallel as opposed to in series if I wired these in series then the load would be greater. I would require 24 volts. So I have two 12 volt fans wired parallel. What you need to take into account whenever you do this is you need to figure out the amperage. Most of these PC fans will have the amperage on there. In this case, you have one that's 0.25 volts. Or sorry, not, sorry, not volts. 0.25 amps, which is actually the larger one here, I'm sorry. 0.25 amps, and the other one is 0.14 amps. So altogether you get still less than half an amp, 0.4, I rounded up to 0.4 amps. So why is that important? Well it depends on what power source you're going to connect this to. You need to know that you need to at least have one amp of current and you need it to be 12 volts. Again, when you're wiring in 
parallel, like poles go together. So we have the control wire again, which is almost always positive. And what it does is whenever you have an adjustable fan, you apply extra voltage to the control wire and it speeds up the fan. And so I've wired both control wires, which are positive, and the uh, two hot wires, these red wires here, all together. We're going to ap apply a constant 12 volts. So the control wire is just, again, just, just because, just because I wanted to have a good connection on one side at least, and uh, hopefully supply it with uh, uh, better, better power continuity. Uh, as you can see, the negative side, there's not really much you can do about that. It, they're both negative wires, they're both thin, but the good news is these are small fans. I have a short distance, so it's not really that big a deal. So I mark these, these uh, four corners with Sharpie, and then I put use this glue, and uh, not really thinking about it, I used a glue that uh, caused a chemical reaction. It actually worked out. I thought it may be a possibility, but I wasn't sure. So I just put the glue down in this foam in a straight line. Now keep in mind, most glues are made to bond with multiple multi-purpose materials. However, when you combine some glues with foam, a chemical reaction occurs and the glue heats up the foam and it kind of melts it, almost as if you were putting it in a microwave. In this case, it actually worked out. I went with it because it allowed the fans to kind of sink into the foam some, which keeps them rigid and keeps them from popping loose. And then right now they're curing, but for the most part, you just want it to be secured here. You could tape it, I guess. I like things to be a little bit neater than that, so I chose to glue them. But be careful when you're using glue that causes a chemical reaction because you can actually use too much and cause the fans to sink all the way through. Anyway, so I mounted the fans, stripped back the wire, and crimped them together on this side. And what I did for just no other purpose than having not having enough uh, extra spare wire, I took a Cat5 cable and put two of the pairs together for the positive and two of the pairs together for the negative because I needed a cable long enough to run to my my battery bank in my greenhouse. I happen to have a battery bank and a solar cell. So my plans are to connect the ends of these two leads and I'm probably going to put terminators on the end here. But you can see I have them twisted together. That's all just Again, I have the blue and the green right here. I'm going to use those as a negative. And then the orange, the white, and the brown white. I'm going to use those as the positive. So I just used the Cat5 wire. You may think, well, that's not really good wire for electricity. Well, for the amount of electricity that we're using, uh, the loss is negligible. So it's not really that big a deal. The whole purpose of this was to not spend a lot of money and hopefully have a way of cooling the greenhouse and you think well what's what good is an ice chest top going to do at cooling a greenhouse well that's a good question the plan is to put this ice chest top on top of the ice chest that I've filled with water I currently have it in my chest freezer I'm gonna freeze that water and on the side of that ice chest I'm going to cut a hole I've seen other people do something similar with bigger fans and a, a hole on the side they use conduit. I don't really think the conduit's necessary you just really need some place for the warm air to go in as an intake be blown over that cold ice and you need just an exhaust vent so I'm basically going to take this and we'll walk this way and walk through my house and I'm going to put it on top of the ice chest this out of the way evidently someone was feeding the dog okay so let me move this over here so here's my chest freezer and again I you could probably do this with this this an ice maker and some ice and dumping it in here I thought well why not have something reusable why not just fill it up with water once and just freeze the water over and over again so we're gonna see how that goes it's probably gonna take a while for all this to freeze but I thought well if it takes that long to freeze it's probably gonna take a lot longer in this insulated ice chest for it to to melt so the plan is to freeze this and I am going to cut a hole down here for exhaust and should have an air conditioner so 
We'll fill you in later to see how it helps to keep the greenhouse cool during the day. But the problem I was having, and we'll walk outside here, the problem I was having was that this is Texas. And the last couple weeks we've had some 100 degree temperatures. Yesterday it was actually 109 at times. And you can see what it did to my plants before I got a chance to protect them. Now, here's a picture of my greenhouse. I have this solar cell up here. But uh, as you can see, I have a shade tarp. And it's helped some plants, like this one over here. But even see, like this one is stressed. My trees are doing okay, my cherry trees. I have some other various plants, but quite a few of my tomato plants and other plants got stressed. They're just probably not going to make it. So, trying to come up with a solution. As you can see, I do have an exhaust fan. Here's my battery bank that's connected to the solar panels. But uh, I'm sorry, folks, when it gets up into the 100 degrees range, there's not much you can do for the plant. So we're going to try out this ice chest cooler and see if it, uh, if it helps any. So that's it for now. I'll get back with you and let you know how it comes out.